the 1967 Camaro Z28 by AMT Ertl, coming up next on Monster Hobby's Model Car Garage. Welcome back everyone to another amazing unboxing video where today we will be looking at the old AMT Ertl Camaro Z28 by Chevrolet. This one is a really cool kit. The first one in our 1967 series. I actually won this thing at a model contest from Stealth Hobbies. They didn't run the contest, but they offered a door prize and I got it. So I'm going to take this thing and unbox it to show all you people out there just how cool this old model kit is. So without further ado, let's go down to our table and take a look at our AMT Ertl 1967 Chevrolet Camaro Z28. Created under the watchful eye of GM design chief Bill Mitchell, Camaro's styling was exactly right. Long hood, short deck proportions, a low chiseled profile, flowing body lines. Like Mustang Camaro aimed at those who wanted a sporty four-seater that could be equipped as an economy runabout, vivid straight line performer, or something in between so there was a Mustang-like plethora of options. So one other thing that was of note, the 67 Camaro came in as a brand new car to try to replace the Corvair from Chevrolet, which was of course quite controversial. This model kit was donated as a door prize in one of the IPMS contests that I entered from Stealth Hobbies, which I don't know if they're still around or not, but there's a shout out to you guys. I still have this model and I barely built it. <laughs> All right, so if we take a look at our box here, we get some nice details. Here we have the model kit specifications for the 69 Camaro Z28. The type is a front engine rear wheel drive two-door coupe. The engine is a 302 cubic inch V8, 290 horsepower at 5800 RPM. Four-speed manual transmission. Tires are Goodyear Polyglass GTs. The exterior features dual wide stripes and spoiler, interior features bucket seats, center console, over 65 parts, full color decals, and paint and cement not included. This is an in interesting thing too, which we'll get into. Uh, anyway, there's a nice picture, a side view of our Camaro. Of course, the edge of the box is like the lid, but here we get to see the custom version of this kit. Just like a big street racing car, which was cool at the, the time. And you got those cool mag wheels on there, as well as the lake pipes and this big engine, which we'll see in a minute here. There's our mag wheel and side pipes, and there's our engine with the high rise dual quad carburetor system and blower. So, pretty cool stuff for this. There's a cool detail I just discovered on the bottom of the box. Whoops. <laughs> there we go. Check this out. Instant win racing card game. Uh, this was oh, Terry Labotine for the 50th anniversary. So this is cool. 50th anniversary of what? Ertl. 50th anniversary of Ertl. So there you go. This is quite a cool kit actually now that you think about it. So let's just zoom back a little bit here and open the lid and see what's inside. And as we open the lid, we are greeted by Terry Labonte himself, the man, the legend, the myth, the trading card. <laughs> anyway, okay, I kind of planted it that way, but there he is, and it gives a bunch of stats on the back and everything else. And then we get these interesting trading cards. The AMT Porsche, the 95 Mustang, and the 94 Dodge Ram. And these were all new kits under AMT at the time for the 50th anniversary. And on the back, they actually give you stats about the real cars. It's kind of an interesting thing. I don't know. Anyway, we get our instruction sheet right here. Oh, and here we go. Uh, won as door prize at IPMS October 7th, 1995. So I've had this kit in my collection a long time. And I did kind of look at it a few times. There's your decal sheet. 
And things got a bit messed up in the box. I think I even started to build a little touch of this. But anyway, there's your glass windows. There's some of the body panel pieces. We've got our body and our interior tub. And I did do the undercarriage. My favorite chrome. Do 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 do. Tire. <laughs> then we've got our components. Of course, this would have been on a plastic bag long ago, but I took them out. Our wheels, wheel backs, the parts, trees, and our hood, custom hood. This is all locked together. Steering wheel. Rear axles, all this, all these great kits. So let's move this off to the side and take a look at our instructions. And here we have our instruction sheet for our 67 Camaro Z28. And of course, with all our write up down here, Z28 is a term Chevrolet used to refer to an engine option, specifically the 302.4 cubic inch 290 horsepower V8 engine. The engine was created by blending the 283 and the 327 cubic inch engines and when modified to the legal limit it was capable of putting out approximately 390 horsepower. Very cool! Very Camaro! Oh, but anyway, <laughs> so it's nice to include the write-up and everything in here. And if we open this up, they also provide us with the important hobby tips and safety bits and using hobby knife tweezers and the brush and our advanced building techniques for model builders which is always nice always no exceptions okay so we open up the multi-fold instruction sheet i hope and we will look at this now panel by panel now this model kit, I'm not too sure if this is actually a full-on retooling effort from AMT at the time, or if it was just an improvement to an already existing tool from the earlier 70s. However, here's our engine block going together, and of course it's uh, two pieces with the transmission and block molded together. It does tell you to paint these orange, which would be your Chevrolet engine orange. There's your cylinder heads your water pump going on the front as well as the engine oil pan and what's cool about this model kit is coming up right here you actually get four different types of intakes on here so you've got this type of air cleaner with the nozzle sticking out the side which they tell you to paint silver then you've got an open element chrome uh, air cleaner as well as a sort of racing style air cleaner with a big wide air intake that bends back and it says, note, if you use this air cleaner, do not cement it into position until step 9. This edge cements where 69 heater housing would normally would go. So this is going into the firewall. And then here's our intake manifold for our 302. You've got your oil filler, your carburetor. And it says you could use all those air cleaners on that in your distributor. And then we get into this big four barrel dual carbureted blowered super motor. It says optional blower setup. Ha <laughs> ha, you're right. <laughs> okay, and then down here we've got our engine for our 302 with the painting notes. For a better looking model, paint individual parts before cementing them together. After paint is dried, remember to scrape paint away from the surfaces to be cemented together. That's the big one. And a lot of guys will use like 10x7 and all these kind of super funky glues because they don't want to scrape the paint away. <laughs> you don't need all that stuff. You can just use testers. and uh, But scrape the paint and go plastic to plastic. Anyway, I'm not knocking the other glues. I'm just saying. If you use the custom valve covers, remember to scrape the plating off surfaces which must be cemented. Okay, so always something important. All right, so there's our engine glued together from step one. Now we get to add on our exhaust manifolds. Those are the stock ones, our stock valve covers, our starter, the pulley and the fans, and our alternator. And now here down below, the custom components. So you've got the blower belt drive, 
so you wouldn't use th this one, right? And then your custom valve covers that are plated, which replace the Chevrolets. And then we've got the custom exhaust manifolds, which would replace these. So then, let's go back a little, because this is a big panel coming up. We have our interior assembly panel, and there's our bucket seats going together with the seat backs, which pop in. Now we've got an interior tub, so again, this kind of makes me think of a 60s, 70s type kit. So that's what I mean. I'm not sure if this is an actual retooling or reworking or just AMT, uh, you know, improve this. I had a magazine on this, but it got lost in the 2013 High River Flood, of course. Anyway, there's the shifter and our steering wheel and instrument panel. And then, of course, our engine drops in here, and then we've got a radiator with the fan shroud going on there. Then, coming down here, we have the undercarriage going together. There's our exhaust pipes, and then they have the two mufflers going into the single muffler, which then goes into two exhaust pipes, which is kind of bizarre. But, at any rate, the mufflers glue together there. The transmission bracket going in here, a drive shaft connecting your engine together, and then you've got your optional lake pipes sitting on there. And then we go into our front suspension assembly, front and rear. So we've got traction bars going onto the back, shock absorbers, differential top, then our, what do we got, tie rods, a lower A-frames, the spindles as well as the springs in here, and then going into our upper A-arms, which are part of the chassis and frame assembly. Then, of course, right down here, we have the radiator hoses going in, and then our wheels going on with our wheel retainer. Then we pop on our stock rally wheels and the tires, and it says stock are the Firestones, customs are Firestone with a mix of Goodyear's. And now, folding our instructions up, we have step seven, which is our windows and taillight installation. And the windows are, again, 60s style with the actual rear view mirror molded in. And then the bars in the back here popping on. So I don't think this was a new tooling at the time. I think they just modified it a little bit by putting the 302 in. I'm not sure. Not sure on that. I do have one of these molded in orange. That was a parts car. And I know that's early. But anyway, there's our stock hood. We also have a street machine hood with the pre-cut notch in there for your blower to pop through. Your grill, your front valence, and the front chrome bumper. As well as a battery, um, hood hinges, and a side view mirror. And then here we've got our firewall. This is very basic. Uh, there's a heater housing, windshield wiper motor, your master cylinder, and the brake booster sitting on there. And then here we have our rear spoiler going on, our rear valance, and the rear bumper. And then the final panel is the decal placement. So you've got the stripes going on the sides as well as your black ones on the hood. So really nice from AMT at the time. And here's our pony car body for GM for 1967 with our Chevrolet Camaro. And as you can see right now, it is kind of just a plain Jane 67. It doesn't have the spoiler or anything on. Those are additional pieces in the kit, of course. But still a pretty nice looking body from AMT. You can see in the fender aprons here, they have a bunch of the wires and whatnot going in, as well as a windshield wiper bottle and many other cool things. You can see, of course, Camaro script right there on the hood. And we've got our vents in here with the windshield wipers. Nice crisp detailing on this body, as well as there's our gas cap on the back right there. And there's the Camaro script right here. So pretty crisp. There is a little bit of Camaro script right there on the fender. Very tiny though. 
You can barely even see it's there. Uh, door handles, typical GMs, as well as trim packages and whatnot. We turn it over. There are a bit of sink marks up in the hood here. Um, but overall, very nicely done. So now we've got a few parts trees here, but these all relate to our Camaro body. Here we've got our stock hood and our four wheel backs. We also have our valences and, of course, our rear spoiler. There's your, your uh, drive shaft sitting right there. And then we've got our custom hood here with the hole for our blower to stick through. These are all the custom parts on this tree. So we've got our exhaust manifolds, the intake manifold, our belts, and of course our two four barrel carburetors. So I brought all these out here because I just wanted to show you sort of their relative bits and how they fit on the body. So remember there's that Camaro script right there. Well, our rear spoiler, if you glue it on, will completely cover that Camaro emblem. This is the one that goes across the back. And as you can see, it's a pretty good fit in there. Then we have our front valence panel, which will go into here, cover up for our front end. And then we've got our stock hood, which will fit in there nicely without any gaps. And then of course our custom hood should do the same thing, which of course it does. <laughs> so again, quite nice. And now let's take a look at the hot rod components. I seem to be missing a, a part of the header there, but there's our intake manifold right there. And then here's something kind of interesting. It says mid blue. So this kit would have originally come in some kind of blue plastic, maybe even metallic plastic. I know they were trying that in the seventies. There's our hood. It's got, of course, the fireproof matting under there, as well as mold marks, which you'll have to take out. And you can see the little bits here for putting in your hood hinges. And just looking at the stock version of the hood, it, of course, has the same thing. Not so many mold marks underneath. But at any rate, those are the Camaro custom body panel pieces. Here we have our chassis and frame. And now this one, I did paint it flat black. It doesn't come this way in the box. And I have glued on the front suspension components for it. But anyway, you can see the nice detail. It does have a subframe in here for more of a unibody style construction. And then there we've got our gas tank in the back, as well as the rear subframe. Just turning this over, you can see the interior would all come in as one thing. So there's no carpet in here. Uh, but there is the nice detail of the upper A-arms of our suspension here. So basically quite nice. Yours would be molded, of course, in the plastic color. And next up we have our interior components. And as you can tell, the, the entire interior is done in the bucket style, which was popular back in the day. We have these nice bucket seats sitting here. Great upholstery pattern. Then, of course, our dashboard, looking prototypical for this year of Camaro. And then our steering wheel. So let's just bring this up closer to the lens. And there you can see the nice crisp detail on these inner door panels right here. Again, sort of a soft point of the kit. There's not much detail on the window winders or door handles. In fact, they're just like little tiny tiny bumps in there more than anything. The upholstery pattern is quite nice though. And then of course our center console. Uh, the three gauges here are just sort of dragged down, kind of blobby style. <laughs> but still not too bad. I mean you could work with it. Nice and smooth underneath. No major mold marks going on there. Now these bucket seats I have actually glued them together. They did come with a separate backing, of course. Need a little bit of putty around here just to fill it into the seat a bit better. But still, very nice detail on that upholstery. Then our dashboard. You do have your AM-FM radio sitting in there, as well as the deep gauges. 
The molding is quite a bit soft compared to some of the other th offerings from AMT, but of course you can always just look through the window, I guess. A little bit of a sink mark on the steering column there. The steering wheel is typical three spoke. And uh, again, not much to be said. This would just plug into the little hole on the dashboard here. And of course this would drop into our interior bucket. The fit and finish on that is quite nice. The seats go onto those little tab bars. You'll have to of course paint, uh, scrape any paint out in order to make that glue together. But as you can see it all fits together very nicely. And now here we have the under the hood type details as well as our custom wheels and chassis components. So here we have our radiator and the fan shroud. There's one of those air cleaners with the wider edge to it. Then here we've got our uh, brake master cylinder and all that kind of stuff as well as the heater motor there. Shock absorbers, radiator hoses, uh, rods and braces. These are the longer end wheel backs for your custom wheels. So let's just move that away and move this up to the camera. You can see the detail is not quite as crisp as in some of the other AMT model kits of the time period. So again, th this makes me think it was an earlier release. Still, there is some nice detail to it. I mean, it's passable. A couple of mold marks underneath here that you might want to take out just to help make this whole thing fit together. And there is a bit of flash on some of these little clips and retainers under here. And now we have our engine and suspension components, which are pretty simplified actually. So here we've got our differential. There is a bit of a differential cover here. It's got wrapped underneath. There's a starter motor, the brace for the transmission, the battery, your pulley system, hood hinges. There's the stock 302 valve covers, the air cleaner with the extended nozzle sitting out of it, and your headers your uh, oil filler, pardon me, and your carburetor sitting there as well as your rear exhaust pipes with the mufflers. So just bringing this up into the camera you can see the detail is quite a bit soft on this kit although it's still readable. It's quite nice. The air cleaner is kind of... I don't know. Was the air cleaners actually like this? It didn't have like a uh, a screw or anything sitting up through the top, eh? Like a wing nut. Wing nut. Because my 72 Oldsmobile had a wing nut sitting through the air cleaner, so... I don't know. You you guys that had the, these Camaros, just let me know in the comments down below. Did AMT actually make this air cleaner look correct to one of those types of air cleaners? Or is there some missing detail they should have added in? Let me know. Anyway, those are those components. And then here, I'll just carefully bend this up, there's the the differential, the top of it. So as you can see, there it is there. The springs are very flat looking. Again, there's no real leaf into them. Although, again, you guys let me know, was that actually how Camaro springs were? Or is AMT just cutting some corners here? <laughs> so, again, there's all your components and the numbers marked underneath. So now we have our remaining plastic components, and I did start to build this back in some day. This kit came out in 95, but I don't know when I started doing things to it. What I wanted to do was build a stock Camaro. So anyway, here we have our um, distributor, our alternator, a radiator hose, the five-bladed fan, the header that I found, it was in the box, the intake manifold, our oil pan, with this nice hole in there for mounting, and then the V8 motor. So I'll just bring the V8 motor up here. This one I, of course, glued together. So you can see just how it is. Very nice. And now we've got my favorite piece of all the model kits, the chrome parts tree. Now there's not too much chrome on this Camaro. I mean, after all, the Camaro was not noted for chrome. I mean, this isn't a 32 Duesenberg or something. However, you do get a gear shift lever. You get the nice front grille with the correct round turn signal lamps. 
Then we have our four Rally SS type wheels, as well as chrome plated air cleaner, side view mirror, then our front and rear bumpers, which are very thin. These are your rear tail lights. Then we get a bunch of chrome engine components and, and of course, uh, muscle car hop up bits, much like the blower on the top and the blower bits there, as well as your um, trumpets here for the intake. And then you got your chrome valve covers and your side exhaust. So let's just bring this up into the lens a little bit. As you can see, the nice detail on the grill. And you can always use a bit of washes and whatever to bring out the detail. The SS Rally wheels, of course, would have chrome outer rims and then aluminum paint would be in there. And then black into the recesses. Should be interesting to try to paint that like that. And of course, your valve covers, your exhausts coming out the side. Let's just turn this over. There's the blower covers and the pulleys in the front. Oop, right there. <laughs> and all that kind of thing. Some nice little detail on the side of the air cleaner. See the paper filament. And uh, there's your tail lights up close. Some nice detail in there. You'll need a bit of a Tamiya clear red acrylic or Tamiya. Tamiya Tamiya potato potato. Anyway, so there's your chrome for this kit. Next up we have our glass components. And as you can tell of the kits that are typical in the 1960s, this one of course has our front windshield and rear glass connected with these big long flat pieces of clear. Now it's always better to cut it off here and here and there and there and sort of use your sandpapers and files to, to get these edges right and then apply a little bit of glue around the edges once it's in the body. Um, you could put glue on here, but it can cause the roof to sink in. And then here we have our two no drafts, the front event windows. Now we have an interesting blend of tire choices for this model kit. We have four of the brand new AMT Firestone tires that came out with in the 90s as well as two of the old classic Goodyear Polyglass GTs. So the idea here is if you are building stock, you use the Firestones. And if you're building the Custom, you use two Firestones up front and Goodyear's in the back. Which is interesting because I don't think Firestone and Goodyear would like you to mix tires on their real cars. But anyway, with the Firestones, as I've shown in many other videos, these ones I actually did machine with my tire spinner. So you can see, of course, the it's not shiny on the treads. But, of course, these are your Firestone Super Sport oval tires with the little ridge in there for your white walls to be painted in, which are nice on the stock ones. And then our Goodyear Polyglass GTs have the raised Goodyear lettering as well as that nice tread pattern on them. So again, the choice is up to yours. You could actually replace all the wheels if you find some more of these Goodyears and have a set of four Goodyears going around. But anyway, there's our wheel choices for this kit. And now we have our decal sheet for our 67 Camaro Z28. And there's an interesting license plate here which says First Z28. What makes this license plate interesting is it is also from Delaware, which was the first U.S. state. And then here we have a 67 Custom license plate from Colorado. And if you remember our 1966 Oldsmobile review, you'll also note that there was a Colorado license plate in there as well. So these cars could be Colorado buddies. <laughs> anyway, we have these nice red pinstripes, red and white pinstripes, as well as some decals for the air cleaner and under the hood. And then you've got your choice of these great white stripes or black ones. And of course, you can always save these for other AMT Camaros in your collection. And that completes our look at the AMT 1967 Chevy Camaro Z28. Well, I hope you enjoyed that amazing review of our plastic model kit for today, the Chevrolet Camaro Z28 from 1967. How many of you have actually built this thing? Let us know down in the comments below. You can always share your pictures over on our Facebook page. 
So until next time, everyone, keep safe out there and happy model building.